Hi, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I wanted to show you um, a method of reading. Now, you could do this with just playing cards or Lenormand cards, but if you're going to use Lenormand cards, you do want to make sure that you um, have the playing card inserts, and it's a lot easier if you actually have like playing card inserts that show like black and red, so it's pretty easy to see. Because um, you'll either need minis or you're going to need um, a larger space because you're going to do six rows. Um, and so this is called the math Master Method. And um, I first learned of the Master Method through uh, this fortune telling using playing cards by Jonathan D. I really like this book and have um, gotten a lot of great things out of it. But I wanted to, I went digging because I was curious as to what this master method was. And I found that this, he, you know, he takes it almost directly, not word for word, but he takes it from, or I found another source from 1915 called Fortune Telling by Cards by Professor P.R.S. Foley. And he lines this method out as well, although he uses a 32 pack of cards, which is the sevens and up with the aces, aces being high uh, in divinatory purposes. And, um, and for the purpose of this 36 card spread, he recommends adding in the twos. Now, Lenormand uses the sixes through uh, aces. Uh, and so I am using, obviously, the Lenormand deck with this, while I'm using playing cards. Now, you could use this. I have done this with just straight up playing cards um, as well. The whole 52, you know, I just don't lay them all out. I just lay the 36 out. Um, and because this is a very specific um, instead of the houses, say, uh, of, um, you know, the rider house, the clover house, the ship house, these kinds of things, um, it has actual positions. And I think I put both of these on here uh, because sometimes they're a little bit different. So the solid, and I'll have this um, handout in the... Um, in my normal handout section, which you'll see in the description bar below. Uh, the first one are more keywords drawn directly from Jonathan D. books, and the one in um, italics underneath it are for um, from the Fortune Telling Cards by uh, Foley from 1915. Again, they're quite similar, uh, but you know sometimes there were differences, and so I wanted to, to put both of those in there. Um, so we have 36 cards, six, um, six across and six down uh, for your total spread here. And each of these positions represents something that when you first read this method, and this is not a quick, this isn't a quick reading, right? This is something that you're going to jot down and you're going to sit with this and kind of look over things uh, quite uh, thoroughly because there's a two kind of two part method to reading this. The first part is clearly just looking at the suits of the cards. Is it a heart? Is it a diamond? Is it a spade? Is it a club? You know, it's just literally looking at those and depending on what is in that position, you have sort of a meaning for what that might mean uh, with that in its position. And so first you'll go through it, this is all aspects like a big general reading right for somebody and then the second one you would hone in on the nine card around them and then you're going to read the nine card um, very specifically um, surrounding you know what using what you have in it uh, but you're going to look for that specific card you're looking at and then you're going to look at the cards um, around that particular question but we'll, we'll get there as we go so for first off we're going to go ahead and shuffle and lay our cards out and I think it's going to make more sense as we work our way through. I think that it's important to to kind of pay attention to what the suits stand for. So for example, um, hearts are car, in playing card associations are good luck, love, happiness, and it also can lift up something that's negative. Um, clubs are about uh, friendship. Um, and, and connections in that way. Diamonds have, um, they're a little bit unstable, 
uh, and then spades are really negative. Um, it's also important to know that the higher cards, um, are, the higher the cards are, the uh, more impact that it has on the questioner. The lower they are, it lets us know that um, things aren't really going to change dramatically uh, for the person. If you're using, if you're not using playing cards, the Ace of Hearts stands for the man and the Ace of Spades for the woman. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lay these out. And again, we're going to go six by six. And these you can see I just used a mini deck and I wrote the name of the Lenormand card on the top of it because I wanted the, and these are Coca-Cola cards, because that's what I had in a mini deck uh, that wasn't being used for something else. So, um, what can I say? What can I say? It's you work with what you have, right? Okay, I think they're all in the viewfinder there. So we can see we have six cards and six cards across. Now let's go through what these positions stand for. Let me get my handy dandy knitting needle. The needle is a pointer. Um, the first card stands for the purpose or the project, uh, which here, of course, we have coffin, so some endings going on in a project, perhaps. Uh, number two, uh, we have the... Uh, book card, or the book card. We do have the book card. The number two is about accomplishment. Number three is about recognition or success, expectations or hope, speculation or the luck. And this is great. We got the bouquet coming, some lucky good things coming, right? Uh, although it may be different with the spade. So first, again, first run through, we're not really paying attention to the Lenormand card. We're paying attention to the suit. Uh, of the playing card. Uh, here we have wishes and desires, uh, injustices, ingratitude, contacts or association, uh, losses, uh, also reversals kind of idea, problems, troubles. Uh, this is possessions. Um, it can also be what your state or your condition is, uh, depending on which one you look at. Uh, here we have your joy, your love and affection, your welfare or your prosperity, uh, matrimony or marriage or you know strong contracts, worries and sorrows, harmony. Uh, this can also be pleasure where your pleasures are. Uh, here we have windfalls, something that's coming to you, inheritance, something that comes out of the blue. Uh, dishonesty, deceit, where are there maybe some things going on here? Uh, we have we have opposition or rivals here, presence and gifts, friendships and love, uh, so relationships in a way, uh, advancement, uh, cooperation. It can also be where you can getting a kindness from. Uh, we have undertaking, something that you're going to undertake. Uh, circumstances or changes in circumstances. Uh, we have sorrow here, uh, or the end of something. Um, we have appreciation or also rewards that you might get. We have some misfortune in this position and or also some scandal possibly. Uh, we have future prospects here or happiness. We have affluence, money, you know, think good things, abundance coming, which is great having the sun here. We have neglect and indifference. Here, some areas in which they are maybe being neglected, which is the heart card, so that's not good, right? Uh, we have awards or favor here, uh, influence and uh, power, our ambitions, and then our sense of health and or sickness. Also, if you don't read for, because in, in, in older cardamancy, they very much read for health, physical health issues. Um, if you don't read for physical health, I use this position for just well-being. Where is the well-being of the person? So then there are rules for, and I put those out here, um, it, it, you're just looking at is what is the suit in that position and so what would that, how does that relate just based on the suit. So let, for example, if we look here to the purpose and we look and see that there is a diamond here. This lets us know that there is an unstable element. There's an obstacle there. So this would let us know that whatever the person's 
current the project that they're working on that the, the purpose that they're you know their their life is going in there's an obstacle in some way there because we do have um the diamonds and it's probably to do with money so there's probably a financial obstacle going on to this particular um enterprise that they're working on. Um, when we look in the second house for accomplishments, we have the diamonds, and this lets us know that there will be success, there, the accomplishment. So in this project, they're, they are going to accomplish it, but it might be marred a little bit. There may be some um, pettiness or some people, some jealousy around them that may kind of, it's not going to be a perfect um Yes, you know, high five, this is satisfying, which would be the hearts. Because the in general, hearts are yes, good, 100% positive, just in general. Diamonds are okay, they're good. Things are pretty good. It's a maybe yes. Uh, there may be some little bit of complications. Spades are no, bad, horrible. Uh, whereas clubs, you know, things could be better, things could be worse. It's kind of maybe no, probably not, but there's there's some room for, for moving about. And so you can kind of see this here. So there is going to be success here, but there could be something that doesn't quite make it to that. Yeah, this is fantastic. Um, so for and moving on, if we go to the third house of recognition, um, here, because we have the hearts, we can see fame. Okay, this is this is going to bring them some success that is going to, people are going to recognize them for, for what they're doing. Again, you, you know, when you're doing an actual reading, you're going to take into account the whole situation. Are they going to go on to be movie rock stars when we're asking about the business that they're kind of building to, to start a flower shop? Probably not, but it lets us know that there are others that are going to recognize their accomplishments. Right. So in the fourth position, which is for expectation, right, or hopes, this is what they may be hoping here, uh, but especially the expectation, expectation. Here we have diamonds. And this is say to think big, set your expectations high. So whatever this is that you're trying to work on, you need to be setting your sights high. Uh, this lets us know. Uh, in here, this is where our luck is good. It's speculation or luck. Take a gamble, what we might might gamble on here. And we have the um, spade here. Again, we're just looking at the suit. Um, and so this says don't gamble. Uh, do, you know, this is like, nope, this is, if you gamble on, if you, if you really get, throw your money in on a gamble, it's, it's not going to work out well. So just don't do it. Stay with what you know um, because we have a spade here. Um, in the last po or the last position of the first row, this is our wishes and desires, and we have the diamonds here that says you can get your wishes, but you're going to have to work for it. Um, so whereas the hearts are wishes will be fulfilled, happily ever after, the diamonds say you can get it, but you're going to have to work hard at it. Uh, the uh, clubs say you're going to kind of get it, but not all the way, and the spades say nope, not happening. <laughs> so you have that very you know, that very strong cardamancy, this, this comes out of cardamancy, and so you have to, to but, you, uh, but you can see, though, that even though you have the really negative uh, spades, you have the very positive hearts, and you have the so-so clubs and the so-so um, diamonds. So you d actually have a very balanced system in cardamancy. It's just that um, it's you know you've got the full spectrum there across the four cards. So you always have to remember that it's not that cardamancy because I think that sometimes. Um, cardamancy is viewed as a very negative um, divination system, and that's not actually true. It's, it's quite balanced in its positive, negative, sort of positive, sort of negative <laughs> connotations. It's got actually a lot of nuance that way. So you would simply work your way, and I have them listed out here from, I think most of these are from the 1915, and I'll put a link to this. You can read this book. It's, it's pretty clear. It lines out exactly what I'm saying, and you could go all the way through here. So say you want to take a look and say, you know what, um, I want to take a look and see... Um, where is the joy going to be? So that would be in position 13. So we have 6, 6, 12, 
13, we have spades here. So it's telling you uh, in this particular, this is where our joy, where are we going to find our joy? And in this particular, if you have spades in this position, it tells you that when you help other people, you're going to help uh, you're going to get it back. So, so what you sow is what you reap sort of feeling. So whatever joy it is that you're looking for, you should be putting that out and that's going to be coming back to you. Does that make sense? So you can kind of start to look here and see, okay, where am I going to get some opposition? Well, I'm going to want to look at the um, 20, um, the position of the 25th, 21st position. So here of six and six is 12, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we have um, hearts here. So this means that the, wherever there is opposition, it's okay, we're going to be able to push through it. Uh, whatever is pushing back against us, we're going to be able to succeed through it. So that's good to see, right? Um, and so then you can kind of go through there and see where, okay, let's see, how are things in terms of uh, long-term commitment? Maybe this person is in long-term commitment. So we would look to 16. So here is six, six is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have the spades here, which means, um, oops, yeah, spades, which means be careful because, um, there's some jealousy here. There is some, there's some not good things going on in the uh, long-term commitment. If it's a seven, eight, or a nine, it can indicate an end of a commitment. Um, but we don't have that here. We just have some underlying difficulties, uh, some jealousy perhaps, perhaps even can be some unfaithfulness. There's something going on under the surface that you're not aware of. Now, isn't that interesting though, because if you think about the King of Spades here, but this is actually the Lily card in Lenormand. I've never really quite felt like there was a lot of connection between uh, playing card, cardamancy meanings of the cards with the Lenormand cards. Um, but uh, it's, it's quite interesting because I've not seen a good argument for why, whether or not these were just arbitrary, uh, which sometimes it feels like the, the images were just arbitrarily put on a deck of cards and not really, uh, it wasn't a connection between cardamancy with it. So, um, but you could also look at this, okay, if Lily is harmony, then the king of spades is saying that what is the opposite of harmony? Some difficulties that are underlying difficulties, jealousy, those kinds of things are going to interrupt harmony. So maybe in that way, we've got a little bit of the shadow aspect. So it's quite interesting. And I'm going off on a tangent. Um, and so you can start to just kind of look through and get some ideas based on, okay, here's some different things. Uh, somebody is going through a lot of sorrow right now, right? So, okay, well, let's go to um, the 28th card down here uh, and we have the seven of spades in the 28th position which tells us that there is yes there is loss whoops where did I lose it right here uh, the spades here tells us yes there's loss um, but this loss is actually going to solve a problem. It's kind of like the scythe. Um, there is a way in which there is something that's going to good is going to come out of this. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Again, gives you some information there about that particular area. So you can kind of go through here just based off of what suit is in what position. And so that's the first part of the reading and you just go through here and really start to kind of dig around, look a little bit, think about what you're going to look, what's going on um, with the, their love, you know, the love, not that it might be committed relationship. What about the emotional love connection here, right? Six, six, 12, 13, 14, we have the seven of, oops. 12, 13, 14, we have clubs here. So we know it's not gonna be all coming up roses, uh, but it actually is in this one. That's why you have to look. This is about constancy and de dependability. So the relationship in this particular case is one that's built on a dependability and a firm foundation there. Um, and so again, uh, with either uh, this, if you want a modern rendition, this book, Fortune Telling Using Playing Card, cards goes through and explains uh, this exactly what we're doing. It has this chart here. It goes through and explains for each position if if it is one 
if it is a, a spade, a club, a spade, a diamond, or a heart in that particular position, what might that mean? And so it goes through each one of these, just like the 1915 version uh, or description of this reading did. I've, I've used this and it's really quite uh, fascinating. It's, it's similar to a grand tableau, but there are specific positions and specific places to look. And so, and it also has a whole section on cards to look out for. Uh, so, so for example, kings in certain positions will tell us more. There's a lot of depth here. And this was all in the 1915 version, and it's quite interesting. Um, if you're using a Romany, it talks about sixes, because which would be also the Lenormand. Uh, now, again, the 1915 version has you add in the twos, so it would be seven through aces, and then add in two. But uh, in this particular book, he's working more with either a gypsy deck or a Lenormand deck. Um, and so how you, um, how you would interpret those uh, it's some extra information about it. Um, so it has you kind of sort through, and, it, and he even says, I love this, after sorting your way through the suits and special card meanings of all 36 positions, you might be forgiven if you end up exhausted and fairly confused. It says the best thing to do is um, to note down each card in its appropriate position because some of them will be very important in the next phase of the reading. So he definitely, this is something that you kind of write out and or leave out on your table for a while so that you can really kind of dig through here um, and get the information. It's not meant to at all to be a quick reading. So that is the first step in reading with this master method. Now, the next step, we are going to focus in on, on a nine card. Um, and so here we have the woman card and the man card, right? And here we can see that there these are the cards that are directly touching this person. Because just like with the grand tableau, just like with many of these um, methods, something that is closer to the significator has more impact. So all 36 of these cards at every time that you lay the cards are are not going to be significant impact to uh, the person right that would be exhaustive and 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 it wouldn't give us a lot of information if we were looking at every single uh, Lenormand card every single time as having the same exact impact on that person that's just not really feasible so the way that we know in these types of readings what is impacting the most the actual person so we can get some general information by doing what we just did about different aspects and areas of the person's life. However, what's important is the nine cards surrounding their card. Now, in the original 1915 version, if the woman card or say the man card let's say showed up here and you didn't have a complete nine card around them that would be problematic right that would be they would say just cast it again cast it again I think they said cast it up to three times and then if you don't get it in a good position then stop I and there are there are older cardamancy methods uh, and where you can pull let's say it shows here you would pull these three up over here and that would give it you there's all these methods in which you can actually create a nine card no matter where it shows up. Um, the way that I address that in Grand Tableau readings is I simply read what's touching the, the client's card. That's what's important. Um, if I'm reading, if let's say the woman card, let's see, go ahead and move it. Let's say the woman card is up here, right? Well, the woman card's up here. This is the cards that's touching it. I'm not going to take these three cards and put them up here because those cards are at the farthest part as they can be away from this person. So in my vision of how you are looking at near and far cards with Lenormand, that simply doesn't make logical sense to me to take the very furthest card and put that on top of the woman to create my nine card. I simply look at the cards that are touching that significator um, and that is what I read what is touching it and so that means if 
the woman card shows up over here, then these are the three cards that are most impacting uh, my client. And those are the cards that I need to read. I need to know that the position that, it, that the woman is showing up in, say in, in this case, in the position of wishes and desires, that's important to know. Those are important to her right now. And I need to be looking at these three cards because that's why this showed up where it showed up because these are the things that are important. And then I can go look at other areas um, to get more information. However, um, I just don't personally find it to be helpful um, to pull things, especially let's say you were to pull these three cards over here to make your, you know, I'm pulling the furthest cards away and putting it uh, in direct connection with my significator and that just doesn't work for me. So I think that everybody has to work out what works for them because this is the same issue that you come up with in a grand tableau. Um, and my, uh, it used to be I would I would reshuffle one time when I was first doing Lenormand. That's how I would do it. If it didn't, if the significator, the woman came in a, or the man, if the person's significator came in an awkward place where you can get a lot of information, I would shuffle and replace down one time. Uh, but I generally found that that first one, because I would take a picture of it, and I generally found that that first laying down, that was the cards that were intended to come up. And if, if we believe in, in the synchronicity and we believe in uh, the power of being able to read for somebody, uh, not the power, but if we, believe, if we believe in the system, then we have to trust the system, right? We have to trust that the cards that come up um, have something to say. And the other thing that stopped me from worrying about it is that I believe that any card in any position has something to say that will be helpful to myself or to my client. Uh, because these are simple and triggers that trigger something for me to say as the reader and or and something for them to maybe hear um, or see as as the, the person looking at this or hearing the reading um, that that will serve a purpose and so for me I just lay it down once and I work with what's there um, and that's just you know that's just the way there's so much more to do here especially in this particular reading and same thing with the grand tableau there are so many things to look at because the whole whole tableau has something to say um, that that needing to rearrange cards or move cards to try to make uh, formulate something is not something that I do but everybody has to come to their own conclusions on that but that's just how I deal with that kind of thing so I'm going to go ahead and, and relay out some Lenormand cards for the second part so that you can kind of see this in terms of Lenormand and plus it gives you another look at how this looks uh, with a, a, a regular Lenormand deck. Okay, now here's a good example of this reading method when we have a full nine card around a significator or the man in this position, um, but we have the woman who doesn't have a full nine card. I did that way I can show you um, this just happened to work out uh, well for me which is good um, this reading that I laid for is for the woman but I'm going to read it for the man here as an example first so that you can see how you would read this if you have a full nine card um, and so in the handout You'll also see this page here, which just gives an indication of how you would read the card surrounding the significator. So if this is the significator here, the cards underneath represent the past, the cards in line with him, the future, and the cards, or the present, I'm sorry, and the cards above the future. The cards to the left give us some indication of things that may be going against or in opposition to him, and the cards in the, um, the line to the right of him indicate things that might be working for him. So even if it's a negative card, you think about which way that might actually be um, working uh, for him in some way. The card directly over his head is a hopes or fears, um, which obviously we're looking at um, what would be a 
um, probably a fear here because of the mice card. And then underneath we have inner motivations, the card directly underneath the card. And so that's the positions in a sense of the nine card, but we still take into account what card they're under. So I think that it's always really helpful and this is also um, there so that you can fill this out. So this is just basically the, the six by six spread with a blank place to be able to place the card to type, to write the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that out um, and then I'll be right back. So you can go ahead and write these all out so that you can mull over and chew over it over time if you need to pick your cards up. Um, I also like to go through and put the um, playing card. I didn't go through all of this because I, I want to keep moving on this um, video, but I do, when it's something I'm going to be working with, I do like to put the playing card association in the corner as well, as that simply, um, again, helps me as I'm going back to read it if I don't have, just because I'm not real good at thinking, okay, ship, um, that is, uh, you know, what what is the card association, because I don't use it all the time, so that is the ten of spades, but I'm not going to remember it, and or if I do remember it, I will have to think about it a lot, and if I'm really working on the reading, I don't want to have to think about it, so I'll, I will tend to go through and write that in, and then what I will do is kind of, for this, because this actual chart is for a woman, you know, I'm going to kind of say, all right, well, here we go. You know, here is the main cards that I'm really worrying about with the woman because uh, obviously um, there, there's not a full nine card. But for this example where I might be looking at the man, then these are the cards that I would be focusing on and that kind of helps me to focus in on what's important and the other is, is extra information. So that's kind of how, again, because this is not supposed to be really an easy reading, uh, this is uh, not, nor is it an uncomplicated reading. And so being able to kind of, even though it's going to take some time to write it out, it's actually really helpful because um, that way you can sit and mull it over. Okay, so, but let's take a look at uh, the man because we have a full thing around it. So we're going to start with looking at the man card and what house he's in. Now this is in the 23rd position and the 23rd position is about a friendship and affection. And we have a heart card in here. And so we have that idea of how people respect and care for you. So we can see that primary on his mind is concern about how he is viewed by others. So that's gonna give us some insight, right? Um, we can look below him to see some of the past issues that may be impacting him currently. And we can see that we have a club um, in the 28th position of sorrow. Um, and this can indicate um, clubs are often to do with friendships. And in the 28th position, this is the loss of a friend. So we can see that in the past, there was a loss of a connection or a friendship that is still weighing on this person, which in, in makes sense given that, you know, he's concerned about what people think about him. We have the snake uh, here, which is the queen of clubs in the 29th position of, of um, appreciation. And with a club, again, uh, this does actually indicate that friendships will people do look highly about him um, in the past. So while he did have a, a difficult friendship and the loss of one, overall he has had people that have cared about him, who've looked highly on him. Um, and then we have, of course, the woman card, which is the ace of spades in the 30th position, which is misfortune. Um, and so here... Um, we have um, a difficult time, uh, that there could have been um, accusations that weren't true, but regardless, it just means things were difficult um, in this, uh, in, in, in general. So this is before we look at the lady cards, I'm just looking generally there. So we have the loss of a friendship, 
which we can see was a quite difficult. However, in general, people looked highly of them depend regardless of whatever the situation was. So that's just looking at the position and that's looking at whether what suit it is. But then we can look, we can see that this is actually quite an obstacle, right? We have the Lenormand card here for our obstacles. Um, and so we can see the obstacle there. We can see this has not been a straight path and that it more than likely had something to do with a woman. But this is all in the past, right? So, and it's probably a significant woman because it's the signi a significator. Now, again, because uh, obviously we read, read Lenormand for people who are uh, same gender uh, relationships as well as opposite gender. And so I always just make sure that I'm clear in saying that regardless of whether this is a woman or, or, or a man, right? It's just the opposite. It's a significator. It's a significant person uh, in that person's life. Um, and so I just always go to point that out, whether, you know, because a lot of the classic decks are simply going to have man and a woman card. And so then I just make sure to say, whatever um, that may, may or may not be for you, that's what this would indicate. So we can see um, obstacles and, and the not being a straight path and difficulties in the past regarding a significant other that is still impacting them today and making them worry about the way that people see them even though according to the club in the 29th position we can see that um, people do actually appreciate do actually see him well despite whatever the situation was we can look in the present line which in here we have this idea of, we have the child in the position of presence and gifts that may be coming to you are coming to this person and this is the um, uh, jack of spades and so we are going to look at the 22nd position with the jack of, of spades and we can see that there are a, right now there are some complications there are complications that are not, not necessarily seen going on so there are some difficulties there that aren't maybe noticed um, and in advancement or kind of moving forward in advancement that we have in this 24th position we have the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, and so here with diamonds, we have, um, you, can, you can persevere through this, but it's gonna take hard work. So we have that sense that there are some underlying issues that he may not even be aware of that are complicating things, but if he puts his mind to it and works through it, there is a pathway forward. So we can see that in the present line. Moving into the future, we have the 16th position of marriage or commitment with, with a um, diamond. So uh, in the 16th position with a diamond, we actually see a good relationship moving forward. Be careful of some jealousy, but it is a good relationship. Uh, we have a club in the 17th position. Uh, and so that is a position of worry. And so with a club there, there's going to be some conflicts and some need for reconciliation. And then in the harmony card, we have the ten of spades. So in the harmony position, um, which is the 18th position, we have a spade which means to cultivate new friendships. So there may be some difficulties ahead. Um, so we need to work through and reconcile some things and also be looking for new relationships, which we can also see with the child here because we have something new coming out of a difficult situation when we just look at the Lenormand cards. And in the future, we have some decisions, right, which... Um, when we, if we look at this particularly, we have a decision that's being that's eating away at this journey, right? Uh, so something, if he's thinking about a relationship in the future, it may be something that's a longer time coming. It's a ship that takes a long time wise. But if he makes some clear and decisive decisions that may cut down on the time it's going to take for him to start uh, or to, to develop new relationships. Um, so we look at that that way. So that is our... Um, looking at the past, present, and future. When we look at the card directly above him, we can see, uh, uh, looking at the card itself, we can see where his hopes and fears are, and he's obviously worried about this whole past situation having kind of eaten away um, 
uh, at his prospects in the future for somewhere. And we're oh, and again, because we're taking into account where he is at, we know that he's worried about how people see him. And so his fear is, is that maybe his reputation has been eaten away. Um, so that's important to know. Um, we also want to look at what's directly below his feet for perhaps some inner motivations. And here we have the snake card. The snake card is about transformation. It can be. It's also about moving forward, uh, but it's not a super straight path. But remember, we have clubs here in the position of appreciation, how somebody appreciates him. And so in this, we have the fact that pizza, so the inner motivation is that friendship, um, people looking at him, friends thinking highly of him. So his motivation is doubly, not only is it, we can see it here in the main card, but we also see it in what inner, in the motivates him in an internal level. So we can see that it's on his mind right now and it's also what motivates him. So we may then want to think about, okay, well, um, perhaps you're relying or worrying too much about uh, what people are thinking about you that maybe not shouldn't be your mo complete motivation moving forward, right? We can look about, look forward to show some things that are actually for him. And generally, we can be looking at the Lenormand here where we have time. <laughs> so what are the things that are working for him? And the understanding that this something that has been painful is going to actually reap harvest. You're going to get something out of this whole past situation. You are actually reaping benefit from it. Um, you've got the time to start to reap the benefits of that. And what do we have? We have um, perhaps a future relationship. Um, which is one of the benefits that yes he had the end of one that's still impacting him right now but in some way that's he's going to reap the harvest of a relationship that might be better for him um, so we can look to the right for the things that are for him against him we see decisions right um, and new obstacles so there are some decisions that need to be made and he's so worried about what other people think about him that that could be really po problematic is he making a decision based on what he thinks is right or is he making choices and decisions based on what he thinks other people are going to think right um, and so I think that because we see much so much concern about what other people think we may have that indication that what's going to work against him is uh, him making decisions based on what other people think are going to cause new problems and new difficulties so you can see, um, and then of course we would have gone and looked at, we could go look at various other places if we wanted to get some more information. Now that we know what's key information for him, you know, we can go to... Um, the joy, right? We can go to the position of joy. So how is he going to get some joy moving forward? Well, we can see that we have a heart in the 13th position uh, of joy. And so that is um, having good thoughts, inspiring joy. Like he's got to get his mental space in a better space other than on worrying about what other people are thinking about him. And that's what's going to bring him um, joy. Um, and so we can kind of go through here and figure out, um, see, other things you know what is it that he really wishes well happiness here we have uh, the bouquet card in the position of wishes and desires he, he he desires for happiness to come to him now we have a spade in the position um, in this particular sp position um, in the sixth position uh, which is letting us know that, that that's not the, the odds of that aren't really high right now because we have a spade in that. But the Lenormand card is saying that we actually, but what is it that he wants? He does want happiness. And I think that he just has some things he's got to shift the way his brain is worrying about other people. Um, so anyways, this obviously is just an example of how you might go about reading this and you can start to tap into other energies here but the cards touching the significator are the ones that are important so then the question becomes well what do we do if we don't have a full set so here we look and we can see if this is actually for the woman right she is in the position of misfortune um, and we have a spade here because this is the ace of spade um, so we have a spade in the position of of um, 
Although, of course, the ace, the spade is always going to be uh, in the position for the significator. So in general, we would just look at it and say the things that she's concerned about, there are some misfortunes, there are some difficulties, um, even some scandals. If you look at this in old style cardamancy, they are all up on their scandals and things. Um, but you just look at this in sort of misfortune. And what is she's really concerned about is some areas that are difficult for her. She is feeling like she is in a position of, of not a great position, and that's weighing how heavily on her mind. Um, we can see, uh, you know, what is in her hopes and fears is a pain, this, this, this painful, well, but let's go back not just to the, first let's look at the positions before we look at the Lenormand. So first of all, we can see that what's on her mind is a situation that is unfortunate. An unfortunate series of events, an unfortunate situation is here. We don't see what's for her, which is interesting, isn't it? Because if these are the cards that are for her that are missing, and she's actually facing this way, you kind of have that feeling that she's kind of stuck in her um, uh, understanding of her place where she's at in her misfortune. She can't really see what's good. She can only see what's against her and the difficulties that are... Um, things that are, are fighting against her. She can't really see that. So so even though we don't have cards here, there is something to be said about her being over here on the edge where she's really not seeing the cards that um, are for her. And so that's one of the reasons why I feel like you shouldn't um, fill in the gaps because where a person shows up in a grand tableau or in something like this, when you're laying all the cards out, where a person shows up actually has something to say. And so we can really discuss how um, she's really not looking at what she has going for her and she's only looking at what she has going against her and what might that mean to the situation that she's in. Um, so there is something to say for that. But we still have information here. We still have two positions in the past here. So here we have uh, a position 35, which are influences, we have a diamond. So under 35, uh, with a diamond, we have um, being pursuing your goals in the past, doing it quietly, be quietly, uh, kind of do, going about your business without advertising it too much. Now, in the traditional sense, it's, you know, that way nobody's going to take your ideas from you, that kind of idea. But that idea of sort of kind of going about her own business and not really advertising it to people. We see that going on in the past. We have the club in the position of well-being or health. Uh, so in the 36 position, if you're reading it for well-being versus health, I put in a section there. Uh, so here we actually have a club here. Um, so there is, again, something is, is hampering, has hampered her sense of well-being in the past that is still affecting her today. She's not letting go of that, perhaps, that difficulty in the past. She's keeping stuff to herself. Um, and so we get this idea that that is still influencing this unfortunate position she finds herself in. In the present, again, we don't see, we only have this card because we're missing this, but we can take a look and see, and she's actually looking at this, which kind of lends lends itself to, um, even, you know, gives it more emphasis. And this is the idea of appreciation um, in the 29th position, or rewards, appreciation in the current, this is the present day, and we have a club in the 29th position. So that indicates indicates that, as we had said before, she does actually have friends who think highly of her. She does have people who respect her. She is actually appreciated by other people, but she, um, um, so we do have that here um, in her present line. However, when we look at it, and well, we'll go there, we'll stop for a minute. So we'll stop and say, so she does have that right now. So she has things, uh, people that do um, look highly at her, but she probably doesn't think very highly of herself, doesn't see herself in that same light. Um, going into the future, we have a heart in the position of kind of the lover. We also have the man card in the lover position. Um, but we have a heart in the position of 20, the 23rd position, uh, which is friendship, affection, or a lover, depending on which one you look at. And so again, this is a good sign. Hearts are good, positive. Uh, so in her future, she actually has... Um, 
a, a po possible relationship with somebody if she can kind of get herself out of the place that she finds herself in. Above her, that idea again of advancement, we have the diamond. Um, and so this is the um, 24th position. And in the 24th position, we have a diamond. So again, it's determination. If she is just sets her mind, instead of setting her mind to what she doesn't, isn't against her, if she can turn herself around and start looking for what she does have working for her and puts herself with some determination, she actually has a good relationship in her future. And she has that ability to be able to advance herself and to move, get out of this kind of where she's stuck in this a little bit of a, of a bad place here. She has a way to get out. So we can look at, again, those little bits here of past, present, and future. Uh, we can look at the things that might be working against it. And again, we can look to the idea of the heart um, in the... the um, 23rd position again tells us the idea of if this is uh, people's respect uh, here in the 23rd position uh, and people that care for you, but they're also, that's in a, in a shadow position. When we look at it vertically, we're looking at how is that against her? What are things against her? And some of the things is, is that she doesn't, either she doesn't see that, she doesn't feel it. Uh, what's working against her is she doesn't feel like anybody is for, on her side. She doesn't have that sense of somebody being on her side. Uh, we also have a club, uh, as we talked about, in the 29th position here and so um, uh, this is also yeah, about people looking highly but this is in the uh, when we're looking at it this way the connotation changes and we again have that understanding that she just doesn't see that there are people who do think highly that could be supportive of her and she's not seeing it we can see it here we can see it in the in the cards here as well and then lastly we have the in the 35th card uh, position um, of influence uh, we have a diamond, um, which is uh, I, that idea that she's pursuing uh, her goals, but she's not sharing them. She's not being open with them, and maybe she needs to be because that's clearly not working for her. Um, but then we can look at the Lenormand. We can again see that there is a man who may, you know, it's kind of a winding path. It's not a really clear path um, uh, with communication. There may have been communication issues uh, in, in that are uh, not working out for her, not for the past, I'm sorry, but for things working against her. We can also look at the man when we're looking in general. We can see that as that sort of leadership role, that sort of masculine forward pushing. Uh, she's not maybe, she's not pushing through that winding path and getting, and the open communication certainly makes sense with what we're seeing here even in the positions. So there's a lot that can be said for her uh, even though we don't have all the cards. We can see her hopes and fears. She hopes that the painful position the painful situation in the past does bring her harvest. She is hoping that something comes of this, right? But she's got to turn herself around here. Uh, we can see underlying, though, what are her... And she strength. Strength is her inner motivation, and that's really powerful. We do have a... Um, a club here, which does indicate there are issues that are hampering her sense of well-being uh, but when we look at the Lenormand it's like she needs to dig deep into her strength that's she needs to use her strength for her motivation and so that she can turn around start to turn things around um, so that's an example of how um, having what's missing giving you as much information as what is actually there. You can get a lot of information from what's missing. So, for example, if she was down here and we have that inner motivation is missing, she may not know what her, she, does not, she doesn't know what motivates her. She doesn't know uh, because all that's missing. We can see that we can look to the past in, in terms of the past. We can say it's time to stop focusing on the past and start focusing on the present and the future. We can also see that maybe there aren't any past things that are influencing her particular situation right then and there. Um, but in terms of inner motivation, we can say she's got to figure out what motivates her because that's missing, right? Um, so if, uh, if she was up here, 
right? We would be missing the future. There are some things in the past that need to be resolved before she can start worrying about the future too much. Uh, we can see that her hopes and fears, she might need to think about what is it that she really hopes for? What is it that she really wants? Because that's not clear right now. It's missing, right? So you kind of use the cards that are missing to tell you uh, something about the situation. We don't have to... Um, take that as now again you can recast and that is traditional there are all kinds of traditional ways uh, to create so for example I know one that I know is sort of a mirroring where you would take the, the three cards on the mirrored side and pull those over and use those to complete it uh, so you can do that uh, that's the most popular one or that's the one that I have played with a little bit in the past uh, but now I just take the information that's missing and, and get information from it <laughs> that's how I approach it but there are you know casting it and again I wouldn't endlessly cast it I used to cast only one other time um, the book said um, in other places I had read it on recasting said three is kind of the max there's nothing you know that's kind of a moot point you have to come back later if it doesn't happen in three casts that's all stuff that as you kind of grow as your reading style, you'll come to some decisions regarding those. Um, so this was just a look at the what's called the master method. Um, if you have heard about this method, uh, please... Um, and used it, please, you know, comment your experience with it in the past because, or in your experience with it in the comments because that would be interesting to see. Um, uh, as I said before, in terms of resources, I will put a link to the um, fortune telling cards, fortune telling by cards, uh, the 1915 uh, text. I will put a link in the description box below. And also the other is... Um, uh, I, I, you've seen me talk about this. I really do love this book. Um, and this has a number of chapters. So it has the master method. So it kind of goes through all those positions. It goes through, uh, and there's more to do. Like you look out for if a particular card is in a particular position, it can tell some more. So there's a lot you can dig into with this. It is not supposed to be a quick spread. It is supposed to be one that you mull over and chew over and work with so you look about like eights don't really mean anything um, of the eight of clubs doesn't mean anything but the eight of diamonds might relate to such and such and so we would start to look and see okay so if we take our our sheet here and see okay well the man is the ace of hearts so we might want to look at the aces because okay that's important right uh, and here we have the ace um of course, that's a significator, so it talks about that being the significator. It's not going to tell us anything more. Um, but let's say we want to see, look at the cards here. So, all right, well, we have the Queen of Spades. While the Queen of Spades, um, no, the Queen of um, Diamonds, sorry, the Queen of Diamonds, uh, in certain houses means something. Uh, it's not in the case. It's not in that house. So we can keep, but we might want to go through all of our specific, all of the ones touching the man or the woman and see, okay, how does that contribute to the reading? So here we have the seven of clubs. So then we would go to the section on the sevens. And this is also in that 1915 version. So the seven uh, and clubs, and so we want to see if it's in 14, 22, 20, nope, it's not in either one of those, so we can keep moving, and we might want to look, okay, well, we've got the tens uh, here, so let's go back to the tens, what do we have, a ten of spades, uh, doesn't have any extra special meaning, and so you would actually go through and see, because sometimes if a card is a, a card is in a specific position, it can have extra meaning to it. So it lists that here as well, and then it goes into how to interpret it, uh, interpret that nine card, and gives you some examples. Um, uh, I think over here it gives you some actual examples of reading it, both with the Romany cards and or with Lenormand cards. So um, this is just a great overall book. Uh, I need to do a, a review of this because it just for fortune telling through playing cards as well as Romany cards or gypsy cards 
and Lenormand cards. It has quite a bit of information and some neat spreads that I've uh, other spreads that I've shown you. Um, and then again, the link to the 1915, which is where he got the ma master method from, uh, that will be in uh, the description box below. So uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this, and if you give it a try, let me know how it goes, and be prepared to dig in, because again, it's not a quick reading, but it's fun to really just start to dig in with a new, a new way of looking at the cards, and a way to pay attention to uh, the playing cards. If you use Lenormand, but maybe don't traditionally, or use the playing cards too much, uh, this would be another way to do that, and start to get, um, pay attention to those in the different positions.